what's up you freaking geniuses. So in this video I'm going to teach you how to graph transformations of exponential functions and I'm also going to show you how to find the asymptotes, the domain, and the range. And if you need a little refresher on the transformations of exponential functions I'll link a video to that in the card above and description below. But other than that let's just jump into it. Let's start with this one. g of x is equal to 3 raised to the x plus 5. Now this number right here whatever is attached to the exponent the x this will generally tell you if your graph is exponential growth or decay. So if this number is bigger than one, you're gonna have a graph that's exponential growth. And if this number is somewhere between zero and one, you're gonna have exponential decay, okay? And that's generally gonna hold true unless there's a reflection, all right? I don't see any negative signs or symbols in here, so it doesn't look like we're gonna have a reflection here, right? So again, we're gonna, in this case, we're gonna have an exponential growth function. And we also have this number at the end, this plus 5. So again, this tells us where our asymptote is. So it's going to be right here at y is equal to 5. All right, so we have an asymptote right there. Okay, so in order to graph this, we can just make a little table and just graph a few points. So some easy numbers to generally use are negative 1, 0, and 1. All right, so if we plug in negative 1 right here, we're going to have that this is... Uh, y is equal to 3 raised to the negative 1 plus 5, and that's equal to 3 raised to the negative 1, that's the same thing as positive 1 third, and we have plus 5, all right? So 5 plus a third is equal to 5 and 1 third, all right? Now let's plug in a 0, so we're going to have 3 raised to the 0 plus 5. Any number raised to the 0 power is equal to 1, so this is equal to 1 plus 5, which is 6, all right? Then we're going to have 3 raised to the first power plus 5. So then here we get 8. All right. So we got three points right here. Uh, so we're going to say, again, negative 1, positive 5, 1 thirds. Negative 1, positive 5, 0 0.333, basically right there. 0, 6 is right there. And 1, 8, right? 1, 8. Okay. So if we play connect the dots, you'll see that we have. A graph that looks something like that right so you can see we get really close to the asymptote over here but we never actually touch it and then we just kind of blast off into infinity in that direction so that's our graph now let's talk about the domain and the range so the domain is basically going to be the same for all of these it's always going to be you can write it as all real numbers or you can say from negative infinity to positive infinity okay those basically mean the same thing all right and for the range uh, again, that's our y values, the limits of our y values. So we go all the way down here to positive 5, all the way up to positive infinity in this direction, right? So we're going to write this as 5 to positive infinity. And here I'm using a parenthesis around 5 because we're not including 5, right? Because we're never actually going to touch 5, but we're going to get really, really, really close to it. All right, next we have g of x is equal to 1 half raised to the x minus 2 minus 3. Okay, so again, this number right here, uh, it's smaller than 1, so we know we're going to have exponential decay. So we're gr our graph is going to look, you know, something like that. Yeah. Something like that. And then here we're going to shift our graph. Well, we have a minus 2, so that means we're going to shift it positive two spaces, right? So two spaces to the right. And then here we have a minus 3 at the very end, so that means down 3 spaces. Okay, and again, this number tells us where our asymptote is, so this time it's going to be right here at negative 3, right there. Okay, now again, we can just make a little xy table and just plot a few points. So again, I'm going to use negative 1, 0, and in this case, I'm going to use positive 2. And the reason I'm doing that is because if you look at our exponent, if I put a 2 here, we're going to get 2 minus 2, which is 0, so that'll be kind of an easy exponent to evaluate, right? But in any case, let's start with negative 1. So we're going to get that this is equal to 1 half raised to the negative 1 minus 2 minus 3, which is equal to 1 half raised to the negative 3 minus 3. Now here we have a negative 3 for an exponent, right? So in order to evaluate this, all you have to do is flip your fraction over and turn your exponent positive, right? So then this right here is equal to 2 over 1 raised to the positive 3. And 2 over 1 is just equal to 2, right? So this is 2 cubed, right? 
And then remember, we still have our minus 3. Now 2 cubed is equal to 8, so we have 8 minus 3, which is equal to 5. Okay, and for our, our other two y values, you can solve them if you want, but I'm just going to give them to you. So they're 1 and negative 2. All right, so here are our three points. So at negative 1, 5. At 0, 1. And at 2, negative 2. All right, so then we're just going to play connect the dots. Oh, so close. Connect the dots. Yeah, that's good enough, like that. Yep, 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 yep. Boom. And then we're going to just go like that. All right, so there's our graph. So again, here's our asymptote, and let's talk about the domain and the range. So again, the domain is always going to be the same, all real numbers. And the range in this case, uh, let's see, the smallest y value we have is negative 3. And then we go all the way to positive infinity. So our range is from negative 3 to positive infinity. All right, just a couple more here. So g of x is equal to 4 times 2 raised to the negative 6x. Now, here you would normally look at your number, right? You'd be like, oh, okay, this number that's attached to the exponent is bigger than 1, so I think this is going to be exponential growth. However, you can see we also have a negative x in this case, right? So that means there's going to be a, a reflection. So in this case, we're not going to assume growth or decay quite yet. We're just going to apply our transformations, okay? So again, whenever you have a number out here in front, that indicates vertical stretching or shrinking, right? And if it's bigger than one, remember vertical makes sense, right? So if it's bigger than one, that means stretch. Okay, and how much are we stretching by? Well, by a factor of four, okay? The other thing we have here is a number being multiplied by our x, right? So that indicates horizontal stretching or shrinking. So this is going to be horizontal something. And remember, it's the opposite of vertical, right? So this number is bigger than 1, so that would indicate a horizontal shrink. And by how much? Well, you just take the reciprocal of this number, right? So horizontal shrink by a factor of 1 sixth, okay? And then the last thing that's happening here is we have this negative sign right here. So since we have a negative exponent, that means we have a reflection specifically in the y-axis. Okay, so those are the three transformations being applied to this function. Now, if you notice, we don't have a number at the very end, right? We don't have plus or minus some number like we did in the first two examples. So that means our asymptote is always going to be here at y is equal to zero, right? Right along the x-axis. Okay, now we can just plot a few points so we can graph this bad boy. Um, so again, we're going to use just some easy numbers, negative 1, 0, and 1. So if we plug in negative 1 up here, we're going to get that y is equal to 4 times 2 raised to the negative 6 times negative 1, which is equal to 4 times 2 raised to the positive 6, right? Now, 2 raised to the positive 6 is equal to 64, okay? So 2 raised to the 6 is equal to 64. So we have 4 times 64, which is equal to 256, all right? So 256. Now again, I'm just going to give you the last two points, which are 4 and 1 sixth. Now, if we plot our three points here, let's see, we have negative 1, 256. So negative 1, 256, that's going to be way the hell up there. So we'll just put a point like way up here. Then 0, 4, right? 0, 4 is right here. And then 1, 1, 6. 1, 1, 6, right? Somewhere down there, all right? So then if we connect our dots, yeah, we can do a little bit. Uh, there we go. That's better. So if we play connect our dots, we have an asymptote right there. So we're going to take a sharp turn. And then boom, there's our graph. So now let's find the domain and the range. So the domain, again, is just all real numbers. And the range in this case is going to be from 0 all the way to positive infinity, right? But we're not including 0, so we're going to say 0 to positive infinity like that. All right, last one here. So we have y is equal to negative 1 half e raised to the 0.5x, right? So first of all, we don't have a number here at the end. So we know our asymptote is right here on the x-axis at y is equal to 0, okay? 
Now, as you can see, we have a few transformations happening here. So first of all, we have a negative uh, symbol out here in front of our function, right? So that means we have a reflection across the x axis. The other thing we can see here is we have a fraction that's between 0 and 1 in front of our number over here, right? This is a special number, but it's just a number. Uh, but this number over here indicates a vertical stretch or shrink. So vertical makes sense. So this is a vertical shrink. And that's by a factor of 1 half. Okay, now E is just some number, so just leave it alone. We're gonna need a calculator for this anyways. And then uh, the last transformation we can see in our exponent over here, we're multiplying a number by our X. So that means we have a horizontal, and in this case, it's smaller than one, so that means stretch, right? And we would say by a factor of, well, what's the reciprocal? So 0 0.5 is the same thing as one half. Reciprocal is two over one, which is just two, right? So a horizontal stretch by a factor of two. Now, in order to graph this, we can, again, just make our table over here using some easy numbers, negative one, zero, and one, right? So plugging in negative one up here, we're gonna get that y is equal to negative one half times e raised to the 0 0.5 times uh, negative one. Okay, so this is gonna be equal to negative one half times e raised to the negative one. Now, if you plug this into your calculator, you're gonna get that this is approximately, and I'm just gonna round to two decimal places, we're gonna say it's about negative 0 0.30. All right, and again, I'm just gonna give you the last two points, which are negative 0 0.5 and approximately negative 0 0.82, all right? So those are our three points. So negative one, negative 0.3, it's about there. Then we have zero, negative 0.5, and then one, negative 0.82. Right, so they're really tight in here. Uh, so we're gonna have a graph that looks something like that, all right? So again, our asymptote is on the x-axis, so the domain and range, right? The domain, always all real numbers, and then the range in this case is gonna go from zero down to negative infinity, right? So we go from zero to negative infinity. Boom. So if you found the video helpful, definitely leave a thumbs up down below. And if you have any other questions or want to see any other examples, just let me know in the comment section below.